Our special guest this morning at 740 is uh, Mark McAdow, pastor at Willow View Methodist Church. Mark, good to see you. Welcome. Thank you, Steve. Good thank, to be here. Thank you for being here. And um, I know that you've uh, have had a past busy week, and then you've got another busy week coming <laughs> on, so we want to talk about two items this morning. Anyway, thanks for joining us. All right. Thanks. Good to be here. Good morning, Pastor Mark. It's very nice to have you here this thank, morning. Thank you, Sarah. Good to be with you, too. Very good. Well, we were talking a little bit before the show about this very special trip that you uh, went on recently. Can you tell us a little bit about your recent mission trip to Haiti and all the details about it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks. Uh, we, we had a, a wonderful event. Uh, we, we, we left for Haiti a weekend ago um, on June 2nd, and we were there for the week. You know, there were about nine of us who were traveling together uh, to Haiti, and we were, we were going to specifically be involved with a Christian school there called Respire, and that's a, a Creole word that means breathe. And so uh, this Christian school is kind of a, a place where they believe is a, there's a breath of fresh air uh, because of the Lord Jesus Christ at work there. We hear on the news oftentimes various groups, uh, Samaritan's Purse comes to mind, just a variety of individuals who've given financially and the, and even the United States has given, you know, yes. a lot of um, help, if you will, and support to Haiti. Based on the fact that you were there for a week, what do you see as the, the greatest needs? After all this help for the number of years has gone to that island, mm -hmm. what do you see as a big need? Well, Steve, I think... In, in 30 minutes or less. <laughs> <laughs> as, a, as a pastor, of course, I'm, I'm going to believe our, our greatest sure. need is always spiritual need. Sure. Uh, but obviously, the, uh, the island uh, of Haiti is uh, very impoverished, very poor. Um, I, I tell you, it was, it was unlike any other place I've been. I've been to Tanzania. I've been to Mexico many times on mission trips. But this is probably the poorest country I've ever seen. Um, one person on our team, as we were driving... Uh, from out of Port-au-Prince uh, on to where we were going to be in Gressier said it was like driving through um, a, a garbage dump. That's just what it felt like. Uh, there's people everywhere, there's trash everywhere, uh, and even though it's surrounded by beautiful waters of the Caribbean, uh, it is really a, a very challenging place to be. Um, the money, the resources that apparently have gone to Haiti have gone to very few. And uh, I understand that it's a, a fairly corrupt government. And so you don't really see the kind of progress you'd hope to see. You talked about all these other uh, destinations that you've gone to for a missions trip. Mm -hmm. How did you decide or determine that Haiti was your next mission trip? Yeah, well, thanks, sir. Uh, we had a couple ladies in our church who have been there before uh, over the last couple years. And so they told us about uh, this Christian school. And really, it was the, the Christian school was really the, the, ter, the determining factor for us because we really wanted to see the miracles that were happening uh, there in Haiti in this particular school. Uh, and it was amazing. Um, this school actually has been built on a mountain uh, that was uh, nicknamed Voodoo Mountain uh, because voodoo is practiced in Haiti. And even every night that we were there, we could actually hear voodoo drums uh, beating all night long. And so they're reclaiming that land, if you will, for Christ. And so it really is a breath of fresh air there. Pastor Mark, if um, some an individual watching our interview this morning, and they've never been on a mission trip, and maybe maybe they're on the fence, I'd like to go, or I have an opportunity this summer or this fall or even this winter to go on a mission trip, what would you say to them as a word of encouragement? Because they're saying, I don't know about going to an island. I don't know about <laughs> going to a third world country. But what would you say to someone who has not been on a mission trip? Well, uh, I'd say pray about it and trust God and, and go. You know, the... Uh, <laughs> Three one, steps. Yeah, right? <laughs> one, of the last, one of the last words Jesus said to us was go and make disciples of all nations. And so that's part of what it means to be a, a Christian, is to go, not simply just to stay in our comfort zone and where, we're, where we like to enjoy life, but to be stretched, to trust God in a new way. And, and I'll have to say, a mission trip always put you in a place where you depend on God uh, in new ways and fresh ways. And I think that's what helps develop your relationship with Him, really. Well, Pastor Mark, we know that the, <clears throat> the work never really stops. Um, you're home now, um, mm -hmm. and there's an annual event that usually takes place here that you participate in. Can you tell us a little bit more about the Vacation Bible School event that's coming up? Yeah, well, thanks, Sarah. Well, Vacation Bible School is kind of uh, something that, that most churches like to be engaged in because it's an opportunity to 
to focus on our kids uh, for a solid week, and we'll be doing that next week, um, Monday through Friday, uh, with a theme called Shipwrecked, Saved by Jesus. And we have children from preschool through fourth grade who'll be part of that. Uh, last year we had about 75 kids. This year we expect to have closer to 100 as it continues to, to grow every year. One of my questions was to deal with the age group, and you just touched on that. But with that age group, Mark, what are, what are they going to be involved in? What, what takes place? Someone, I think we all have an experience vacation Bible mm -hmm. school at some time, but maybe things have changed since <laughs> when I went to, say, yeah. vacation Bible school 100 years ago. Yeah. So uh, what, what takes place for the kids during well, the day? It, it's a very high energy event, <laughs> I'll say that. A lot of music, a lot of fun games. Uh, there'll be some crafts, of course, and snacks, and, and a Bible story every day uh, with, you know, themes like, you know, when I worry, I can trust in Jesus, or when I'm afraid, I can trust in Jesus. We, we really focus on that theme of being rescued by Jesus, that he's always there uh, for each one of us. So it will be high energy, very tiring for the adults, <laughs> but it will be a lot of fun. And uh, we will we'll have a great time just uh, investing. It's really great to get to focus, you know, those hours in a concentrated way. You can really make a lot of difference in, in a child's life. And, and many children can actually come to know Christ so in at, a personal way. So at the end of the week, you'll be shipwrecked? Is that what you're uh, saying? Well, <laughs> hopefully rescued by Jesus, yes. <laughs> I'm just trying to expand upon that shipwrecked thing yeah. that you have here. There may be more meanings to that. I'm sure there are many <laughs> levels to that. Yeah. No. For those, of, um, for those um, watching us this morning that would like to attend, or bring yeah. their kids, actually. Mm -hmm. um, where are you located? Where is this event? All right, located? we're at 3525 West Purdue. So that's just a couple blocks east of Oakwood on Purdue, or, or like I like to say, Willow View on Purdue, <laughs> uh, because many churches are located on Willow Street, but we're, we're on Purdue, so. Pastor Mark, if we could, and, and Penn, if we could, let's go back to the photo of, you're in front of a, ch a chalkboard, it looked like, yes. and uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your friend there and really what was t taking place. Yeah. And thank you for sharing that photo with us. Well, this, this, for me personally, this was one of the greatest highlights. So that's Miguel. Miguel is an English teacher. Um, and uh, we were invited to, to be a part of his Eng English class. That class had a child who was seven and had a gentleman who was probably up to 50. So it was a community class. Anyone uh -huh. could come. Uh, Miguel just uh, loves the Lord and loves English. And so he gave me an opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with a simple illustration and he was uh, and I had an interpreter so that we'd go back and forth uh, but it was just a fascinating time because I set it up I said would you like to know what the message of the whole Bible is in about 10 minutes of course eyes get kind of big and and so I start drawing this illustration and we begin sharing a little bit together and I said well really the message of the whole Bible is simply this God wants to be in a relationship with you that's it throughout the history. That's what the Bible's all about. From Adam and Eve, all through the children of Israel, all up to today, it's all about having a personal relationship with Christ. So it was very fascinating though because I didn't know this in the voodoo culture, the cross is considered to be very evil. And so when you're talking about the cross and how important that is to Christianity, these people began to ask me questions. Well, why, why, why are you talking about the cross like this and things? Because isn't it evil? And, and I said, well, you know, it was evil, but Jesus made it good because Jesus died on the cross to pay for our sins so that we wouldn't have to. And I could see that there was this transformation beginning to take place sure. in the minds of some of the folks who say, the cross can be good? And they even asked me questions in the question and answer. Is it good to wear a cross around your neck? <laughs> and I said, well, if you're a Christian and you know what it means, of course, it's a great symbol. But if you don't, it really means nothing to you. So why would you wear it? And just that experience there raises the awareness of how we interpret things here in the U.S. Yes. versus other countries as well. Mm -hmm. So. Right.